and we're not saying oh just get married and be homeless or things like that like sometimes you really don't have the means <laughs> yeah. to yeah, get yeah, married yeah. but that's that. why it's so important to have a support system yes. and not saying support them forever they just need your help until they can get on their feet it's crazy because some parents actually want their kids to be the best Muslims, mm -hmm. but you don't support them yeah. when trying to do so, or you don't equip them with the right knowledge to try to do so. So what do you, that's what I was saying, like, what do you expect? Yeah. What do you expect us to do? Assalamu alaikum and hello MK family. You are now tuned into a video of Mu and Kai TV. We're you back. You gotta have your hand huh? on my face. <laughs> like, I am sitting oh, right fuck. here. Do say it. Like, what? <laughs> Didn't I do that before? Yeah. You know I mean? <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> Go ahead, introduce you got it. Got I'm it. Introduce. What? Okay, so guys, we posted on our Instagram to give us questions because honestly, we can't thank you guys more for supporting us, especially on the last video. We did not expect to get that much support, so we would like to start the video off by saying we thank you and we can't be more blessed to have supporters like you guys. So yeah, that's why we did the Q&A, just to see the questions that you guys have, where your heads are at, what do you want from us, mm -hmm. like, content-wise, and things like that. So we picked a few questions, and we got a lot of good questions. Of course, we can't answer all of them in this video. It can only be so long. And we're just going to answer the questions that we thought were pretty... Uh, that, Interesting. Yeah, and that a lot of people can benefit from with the answer, so... We're going to get straight to it, into it. I know we're going to get straight to the skin the first question. <laughs> How have you guys been dealing with the pandemic and everything in life right now? Um, dealing? <laughs> like, I don't know. I honestly got used to it. Like, it doesn't even affect me like that anymore. And I've been a homebody anyway, so I didn't really go a lot of places yeah. to begin with. So it hasn't really stopped my daily life, yeah. really. Um, life is the same. Yeah. I'm gonna be honest, but, but what it really did... Cause it's just been so many crazy things happening. It's been like desensitizing me to the corruption in the world. You yeah. know what I'm trying to say? Cause yeah. everything like happened within this year. So it's just like, I'm not surprised at anything anymore. Well last year. And <laughs> well last year, yeah. Into this year. But yeah, I would agree. The only thing that would bum me out that I've been bummed out about is school. I'm probably not gonna have a graduation. <laughs> That's like the only thing that I'm, I guess, upset about, but I've come to the terms, it is what it is. But I'm just happy to be alive because a lot of people have passed away this year, mm. well, last year, 2020, and continuing to this year. Yeah. People have been through a lot of struggles and stuff, and I'm just grateful that I'm still here, still able to worship my Lord and keep pushing. Yeah, we've just been chilling, reflecting, trying as, as much as possible to gain knowledge and self-develop yeah. ourselves behind closed doors. Because that's what we should be doing, which a lot of people have. Yeah. A lot of people like, have it's, time it's like with a themselves. Blessing yeah. And uh, I don't want to say a curse. But it's, it's a it's test. A -edged it's a sword. test. That's what it a is. Test. Like uh. extra time is a test because you have all this time, but you could be using it for good, but you also could be wasting your time. And that's bad. So it's it's tough. But Yeah. So that's how we've been dealing with it. Um next question. Next question? You want the next question? Yeah, I do. Hmm. How old are you guys? I'm grown. <laughs> what? <laughs> Y'all need to know my business. It's like, now I already told y'all. I'm 22. <laughs> y'all, well, I, I, I was about to say 21. I always forget. We just turned 22, so that's why it's kind of I always forget. You know yeah, I, mean? we, I need to get used to being 22, so I always think 21. Yeah. 21. Wait, no, 22. 22. Huh? Oh, my goodness. Next question. This man don't know his age. <laughs> okay, so question three. What is your favorite thing about each other? I always say the same thing and it's still the same thing is patience because i'm a lot to deal with mashallah i'm giving you your props mashallah mashallah, mashallah. 
I would say the <clears throat> the best thing about Kai is her. I really like your sense of humor though. She make me laugh. Like I don't usually get genuine laughs like that. So I would say her laugh. I yeah, he's funny her too. Humor. I think we just funny for each other. What do you call it? Like we both like make each other laugh. You know, like some some people like is one that's funny and the other ones are kind of bland, not really that funny. Mm. But like I feel like we match each other's energy. We yeah. match each other's energy. True. Yeah, that's yeah, that's, that's, what it that's is. the same. Yeah, that's what it is. Question four. Do y'all want to raise your future children in America or a Muslim country? Definitely a Muslim country. There's no, like, thought into that. It's definitely a Muslim country. Yeah. Not to say that Muslim countries aren't getting liberalized and affected by the ideologies that America and democracies are afflicted with. Mm. But you can't compare. It's just way easier to practice your religion. <laughs> I guess you could say. Yeah, so it's just way easier to live and yeah, be a Muslim less, in a Muslim less country. less distractions. Way less distractions. Like, there's more people that look like you, that mm. act like you, that do the things that you do. You're more comfortable. Especially with the language. I definitely want my children to know, like, Arabic. So, I would rather them grow up knowing it and mm. learning at a young age yeah. than later on. But I don't even want to live here. So, I, don't, I definitely don't want to raise my kids here. So... That's the plan. That's the plan. That's the answer? Yep. Yeah. Alright, I'm not gonna lie. We be getting a lot of questions about like haram relationships. Mm -hmm. Like pertaining to relationships with the opposite sex. Or just marriage in general. Or, yeah. Cool. But this one's mainly about that. So it says how to stay patient when you are not in a relationship and you don't want to be in a relationship. Before marriage. I've seen that. Before thing. marriage. Oh yeah. yeah, she added another thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, this one's interesting. You wanna, you wanna answer? Did I start to answer? <laughs> I thought you were to say something. No. <laughs> I was just seeing what the question was. But. but basically how to stay patient, Allah tells us, and when we think of Allah, a lot of people don't really understand that it's coming from an entity who has infinite wisdom, right? He gave us this guideline and a map to basically be successful in every situation. So this isn't our words. This is from a entity who created you and understands you better than yourself. So what he says is to not come close to zina. So anything that can lead you to being in a haram relationship, you got to stay, stay away, away from, from it. it. Because it's just like eating food with a lot of toxins and different things like that over and over and over again. What are you doing? You're, You're heightening your chances to get cancer. Or to kill yourself. Or to kill yourself. But if you just cut all those foods out, what do you do? You lessen your chances to getting cancer. So in Islam, we believe in a concept prevention is better than cure. It's better to prevent the disease than get the disease and try to work back. So Allah tells you to not go anywhere near to it. Don't free mix, right? If you you have to lower your gaze. Yeah, especially if you're on social media. Like... Yeah, you know, follow men medias, back, you know, exactly. follow all women. Allow only women to follow you or vice versa. If that's how you choose to uh, yes. go about it. If you have friends that do free mixing and they invite you somewhere and there's guys there, then maybe that person shouldn't be your friend. You know what mm. I mean? Like limit the places that you go to with your friends and stuff like that. Limit yourself. Like my mama said, um, protect watch yourself. yourself because in this day and age, man, it's so easy to get caught up. It's so easy. Right, you see somebody attractive on Instagram or Facebook, you might even be on your search bar. Mm -hmm. Some place you're not really even expecting to get aroused like that. Mm -hmm. Guarantee is if someone's attractive, Shaitan will start whispering to you. Mm -hmm. Especially if you haven't done your ath cards to prevent his whispers from afflicting you. Oh yeah, that's another thing. Just do things that are part of the sooner that are obligatory but that can protect you that, that can, can help you like you. those duas yeah. in the morning saying enough for to hajj and stuff and asking Allah to protect you from these things because we can only do so much you know we're human we need Allah's help in those areas because whoever Allah guides okay. none can misguide and whoever Allah misguides none can guide so ask Allah to guide you inshallah you know he will he will keep you patient until he gives you some a benefit inshallah you know, we appreciate you guys watching this video and inshallah, we hope that we can benefit as much as you guys. We just like you to like this video and share it to as much people, as much teenagers, you know, as you can, inshallah.
Next question is any advice on how to choose to wear hijab and be a better Muslim over this dunya? Mm. That's a that's a deep question. Yeah. <laughs> I would say first and foremost to gain knowledge on the importance of wearing hijab, the importance of following the religion and fearing Allah, learning about Allah so you can better fear him because a lot of times we forget, like we know Allah is there but we really forget sometimes, mm -hmm. you know. <clears throat> I will argue with you, some people don't even know Allah is there. Yeah. Some people, people don't. Can't people can't even conceive that he's actually like listening to us, the angels are writing things down so it's like yeah and that's because people are ignorant to Allah like his mm. his attributes about him and like why we should fear him and the importance of that so I would say gain knowledge on those things um gain knowledge of your religion because you're not going to know how to practice a religion if you don't know about it you know what I mean mm. so you're going to fall into more sins you're going to do these things if you're not aware of them and fully understand them and not just oh Allah commanded us to wear hijab like no there's a deeper meaning to it you know what I mean so once you learn those things and you learn to love it, that's when it'll be easier to do. When you mm -hmm. realize that what people think in this dunya is doesn't even matter compared to what Allah thinks. Once you realize that and you gain the knowledge and you grow to love it, then it'll be easier to do. Yeah. Think that that's please. just a sum up. I mean, that could actually be another video topic. All of these questions are like really good yeah. and we can only say so much in a short video with multiple questions. So we'll definitely use some of these responses as video ideas to talk about later on. Inshallah. Well, I think, I think this question leads right into the last one that we just speaking on. So this question what? said, what books are <laughs> great for in-depth learning of Islam? First, I would like to say me and Kai, we're not scholars. Yeah. <laughs> if you expect to come to this channel and just be like, these guys are so knowledgeable, oh my goodness. I can't live without Mo and Kai. Like, no. we, we gotta chill. You know what I'm saying? Like, we're only trying to regurgitate things that we learn from the scholars and mm -hmm. their books. And students and knowledge. And, and the students and knowledge. If anything, we just want to connect you with people who know more so they can teach you more about your religion in, in depth. Me and Kai, I wouldn't say we're surface level, but you know, there's only so much we can go into. So we're gonna try our best and inshallah, give you some good advice to the best of our ability. So I would say the first book, obviously this would be cliche, mm. is the Quran. Yeah. Start reading the Quran. This is the true book from Allah, right? So the more you understand that and all the rules and regulations it has in it, Allah said he has perfected the religion through the Quran and the Sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He has perfected all the things that we're supposed to know as human beings. We can know through the Quran and the Prophet and learn it from the companions and how they distribute it through the world. So I would say number one book is it the Quran and I would also say the Quran is written in a way that like sometimes we don't fully understand so we shouldn't just make up our own explanation of it yeah. we shouldn't interpret it on our own especially if we don't really understand so that's why there's sure. tafsirs that we can read there's some even online that have the tafsirs of Ibn Kathir right that's the Ibn one Kathir, yeah, yeah. Tabri, there's yeah. uh, Asadi, there's a lot of good tafsirs tafsir is basically the interpretation of the Quran how yeah. you're supposed to understand it because if anybody picks up the book, obviously you will get those evil people who are not Muslim, who do certain things to innocent people that we're not supposed to do in Islam. And then the country looks at those people and basically tries to put Islam behind that and propagate yeah. a message that wasn't even supposed to be understood that way. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So because it's just they like, were ignorant to the actual they were ignorant. Yeah. Uh, meaning of it. Say if you don't understand something, don't try to interpret it yourself read the tafsirs and i'm pretty sure that there's authentic videos on the, the tafsirs and stuff like that so definitely read the Quran. the Quran, and i would say the second book try to get well versed in akida because this is the most top-notch thing that we should be learning as muslims فأقول لا بد أولا أن نعرف ما هي العقيدة العقيدة هي ما عقده القلب من الإيمان واليقين بما يجب اعتقاده وهي الإيمان بالله 
وملائكته وكتبه ورسله واليوم الآخر والقدر خيره وشره هذه هي العقيدة التي سماها شيخ الإسلام ابن تيمية رحمه الله اعتقاد الفرقة الناجية المنصورة إلى قيام الساعة Akida al Wasatiyah, they say, is one of the best books on that. And Kitab al Tawheed is one of the best books that breaks down how to worship Allah. Well, verse yourself in Tawheed. If you guys want the books, you're free to inbox us, inshallah. And we can try to send you a PDF or something like that, or just give you a name of the book that the scholars have recommended. I want to understand my stance on celebrating birthdays. How do you guys feel about it? So the argument for this goes as follows. The Prophet ﷺ has mentioned to us, authentic hadith, that basically nobody has faith until he loves the Prophet ﷺ more than he loves himself, his family, and different things like that. So we are supposed to love the Prophet ﷺ before we love ourselves. So if anybody is worthy of their birthday being celebrated, it will be the Prophet ﷺ. Fair? That's fair, right? Like, it will be him. So there's a lot of shakes that I'm pretty sure you're aware of, and you've been seeing mixed reviews about this stuff. Is it, can we celebrate our birthdays? Uh, there's brothers saying we can, there's brothers saying we can't. So what do we do in a situation? It goes as follows. The prophet himself, if anybody deserves to be listened to, if the prophet says something, his supersedes a shake, right? So let's go back to what the prophet or something said. I'm gonna read it verbatim so I don't mix anything in. He said, verily, among you who lives long will see great controversy. So you must keep to my sunnah and to the sunnah of the Kulafat al-Rashidin, the rightly guided caliphs, those who guide to the right way. Cling to it stubbornly. Beware of newly invented matters, for verily every bid'ah and ovation is misguidance. So the Prophet ﷺ said, those who live long, you will see great controversy. You will see Sheikh saying this, you'll see this, that. So who do you say the successful people are or whatever? He said the people who got here to my sunnah and the sunnah of my companions. Now that we have that in order, we first said if anybody is worthy of their birthday being celebrated, we should be celebrating the prophet's birthday because we should love him more than ourselves, right? So now you have to look at what the prophet Sallallahu did and his companions. Did they celebrate the prophet Sallallahu birthday? And when you look at that, you will simply see that they did not celebrate his birthday. And when you go back in history, you will see that this was introduced by the Shiite. So they introduced this and they got afflicted by this from the non-Muslims. The non-Muslims were people who celebrate their birthdays. So in simple terms, that's the answer. The Prophet Sallallahu didn't do it, his, his companions didn't do it. So what does that mean we for us? <laughs> we shouldn't do it. And even when you do look at celebrating birthdays, right? What do people do? Usually get cakes, blow it out. What is the foundation of blowing out a candle even on a cake? The history of that is the Greeks used to make a round cake and put candles on it for what? They used to do that to pay tribute to their gods. Gods, with, so, with plural. God. <laughs> so not God, but gods. Yeah. <laughs> So the usul, so the foundation of that is committing shirk. You get what I'm trying to say? So even if you throw that to the side, not to be long with it here, but he comes from the non-Muslims. And as the Prophet Muhammad said, whoever imitates a people is from them. So that's why we as Muslims, we don't try to imitate the kufar. And even when we do, because people can say, oh, but we wear clothes like them in America, different things like that. But there's still even regulations on that. You get what I'm trying to say? I can't wear baggy clothes over my ankles. I can't wear tight clothes and I can't get a fade in, you know, like the box tops and different things like that because the non-Muslims do this. And the more you imitate somebody, there's no doubt they will have an influence on you. So that will be the answer. I hope I answered it in a comprehensible way that you can understand, inshallah. Mm -hmm. And if you want more information, you know, inbox us. We can give you more evidence. Mm -hmm. And we're not perfect. We fell into that. We used to do that. So everybody's at their own stage, but it's important to learn your religion and don't just do what everybody else is doing. Truly yeah. learn your religion for yourself and to better yourself. So, Michelle. And there was one last one I did. Well, no, this video is kind of long. Sorry. But was it like 25 minutes? Do y'all like long videos? I'm going to ask y'all that. Do y'all like these long questions or would you it's like so us to shorter? Long. You know what? We just going to make it long. Oh well, so, <laughs> it is what it is. Listen, we, we we don't know when we're gonna put out another one after this, so it's, it's a long video for you to keep watching. <laughs> okay, answer, ask the question.
Thank you guys, whoever made it to this point, we thank you, inshallah, like and share this video, please. This is so offset. You're so offset? What do you mean? <laughs> like, that's not how it was. Uh, okay, go ahead, you can ask. You, can you ask have to stop question. to recollect some stuff. <laughs> so the next question, what do you guys think it is? It's like, no, nah, alright. Gives it mm -hmm. a point, alright. What? Give suggestions on some questions to ask for a sit down for those looking to get married. So, <clears throat> excuse me, my voice is all cracked up. Uh, you're supposed to say book. Sorry. The book? So the book, we basically got this. <laughs> what in the world? I'm gonna need you. Okay. Oh, man. What is going on? Alright, I'm being serious. <laughs> so the book we got this answer from was The Rights of the Spouse by Sheikh Suleiman al Haley. Haley. He's a scholar that resides in Medina. Yeah, so the um, the Rights of the Spouses is a book that just tells like the rights before engagement, after engagement, while you're married, the rights of the men and the women. So he says that the rights before engagement is the right of choice such that the person chooses someone upon religious commitment, rectification, and good character. Thus, the man desires the woman due to her righteousness, her religion, and her good character. And the woman desires the man due to his righteousness, his religion, and his good character because this is the foundation of goodness and happiness. So no matter what else that person may have, any other goodness that you claim that that person has whether it's wealth whether it's status whether it's beauty none of those things compare to their religion mm -hmm. and whether they have a relationship with the law and they fear a law so that is the most important thing that you should look for in a person so if you're going to ask questions about that person what are the questions that you would ask that correlate with them having a relationship with the law and being religious do they pray five times a day how do they treat their mother, their sisters, their family? How do they treat people in general? Do they have good character? Like things like that. Yeah, obviously though, obviously a lot of times they ain't gonna tell you the truth. Yeah. It, so it, it's important to like ask people around them. Yeah. So I would hope that their family is really honest with you. I mean, Muhammad's sisters were honest with me, but like sometimes but, it's not always like that. But the like Prophet that. Sallam gave us a, a clear cut way. Mm -hmm. he, the Prophet Sallam said, a person is upon the religion of his best friend. Mm -hmm. Look at how his best friend's lifestyle is. You know what I'm with saying? Their friends who they surround themselves with. That's right. That's true. It's easy to know in this day and age a person's lifestyle is like what they post. You can you can even ask if you have a brother, follow his best friend or or follow him, see what he posts. Eventually something. Yeah. And ask a lot during this process to mm -hmm. you know show me, make it Sakara, do other things that you can. But like yeah. she said, the religion is definitely. It should be the top priority. It also says in here, the man said to Al Hassan Ibn Ali, may Allah be pleased with him. A group of men have proposed to my daughter, so whom shall I marry her to? He responded by saying, marry her off to the one who fears Allah. If he loves her, he will honor her. And if he dislikes her, he will not oppress her. Mm. So that's deep. So if you're marrying her off to a man that fears Allah, if he loves her, he will always honor her. But because he fears Allah, even if he dislikes her, he will not oppress her. Mm. So he will always have that respect for her and he will never put her in a position to oppress her. And he will treat her in a manner that is befitting. That's how important it is to marry your daughters off to men who fear Allah and women that fear Allah. And especially on the women's side, if you want a righteous wife, a wife that's going to teach your children a slam, you're going to be careful about the type of woman you marry. Both men and women should keep in mind that you're getting married, that person is going to either lead you to Jannah or lead you to hell. Like that's half of your deen. And the point of getting married is to have someone to lead you to Jannah. So mm. you need to find a person with those qualities that are going to be able to help you get there you know that's what i would say the specific questions we didn't really say specific questions but those questions should correlate around whether they fear law and whether they have a solid foundation and relationship with the law and are religious so i heard that extreme benefit what'd you say mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying yeah. <laughs> like in but no a person said sometimes asking like like you remember what we seen before Oh yeah, the uh... about like the like asking trick questions. Yeah, like maybe how do you feel about uh, Drake? You know what I'm saying? You know, just like yeah. I don't know. He'd be like, yo, hey, he's tough. You know what I'm saying? Like, and then yeah. that's a red flag. Oh, he listens to music. He's he, a Drake or, fan. Or, you know? Yeah, he looks up to the wrong role model. You know yeah. what I'm saying? So different things like that. Or like, how do you feel about? Or like something you know, like, like some... anything. Right. Or like, how do you feel about women that? 
show their like bodies or don't cover properly. I don't know, something like that. <laughs> if a person wants to get married in a few years but also wants to meet their potential, what should they do? So it's basically saying want to get married in a couple of years, but obviously before you want to get married, you want to reach your goals. Yeah. So me and Kai was talking about this earlier, and I was basically saying if marriage isn't one of your goals, Top goals. that you that you want to accomplish, the, there's an issue. Mm. I'm trying to say because the easiest way to fall in temptation is to accomplish Worldly all that goals. you think that you need to accomplish before you get married, and make this a means of like the end. You know what I'm trying to say? Of like contentment okay i'll get married then i'll be content but before i'm gonna do what i want to do there's no doubt that you're gonna have trials in doing those goals mm -hmm. so a lot of times people think marriage backtracks them yeah. from accomplishing your goals and in many cases it can it helps you it, it can help you not only that person but a law will put goodness in your marriage like we don't understand like the power of a law he even makes different statements about seeking richness through marriage or seeking an increase in wealth through marriage get married first to get this you know i'm trying to say we always think we need to get wealth before we get to marriage but allah and you know the different companions and different things they talked about this seeking richness or an increase in whatever you want through marriage because allah will see that you're trying mm -hmm. and we know in hadith kurtzi when allah basically says you take one step towards me take 10 steps you come walking, I come running. You know what I'm trying to say? So marriage is very yeah. important in the law's eyes. And we're not saying, oh, just get married and be homeless or things like that. Like sometimes you really don't have the means <laughs> yeah. to yeah, get yeah. married, it's but that's that. why it's so important to have a support system, especially in mm. this world. This it's so I'm I'm gonna be honest with you. What 19, 20 year old, you know, 21, 22 even is well off in the Western world, even in some other countries as well. You don't know that many, if mm. not any. You know what I mean? And look how many temptations that we have at this age, especially. It's nothing like before in history. Exactly. You know it's like it's not like we have these great jobs at these young ages and we're yeah. able to work being so young like they were in the prophet's time. It's but so you saw them. So it, we need support, you know what I mean? Especially to the parents, if you have kids that really want to get married, I really stress to you, if you really want them to do good, please support yeah. them. They need your support, they need your help. Because if not, they're going to fall. It's so hard, it's so hard to remain on a straight path, stay away from Zena, stay away from these crazy, toxic things. Marriage is a protection. It's a means of protection in Islam and they need your support. So if you can give them that support, I really, I really suggest that you do that because it will help them so much in the long run. You know what I mean? Yes. And not saying support them forever. They just need your help until they can get on their feet. Would you rather them be living with you and still obeying your rules and things like that, helping you while giving you rent money than them having babies out of wedlock and fornicating and all these things? Like, what would you rather them do? You know what Wally, I mean? So, because that's what it's going to yes. lead to. Like, subhanAllah, what, what but that's what want. happens. So, on top of everything she's saying is spot on everything I would say. Mm -hmm. On top, like, you got to understand this as, as parents, right? The parents out there, we have to wake up. Especially if you're a parent, you are not grounded in your religion. I'm not trying to come at you or anything, but this is just sincere advice from people who are younger. We do look up to you guys, but we also see where you slip. And if we don't put you back up, you know, when you slip, who are we? Yeah. As as your younger Muslims, who are we to not correct you when you slip? So if you think that us correcting you is us disrespecting you, you have the wrong mindset. It's backwards. Mm -hmm. Just like a kid who doesn't want to hear from his mother or something like that because he may have more knowledge. Right, right, like, and wrong is humble. wrong. Like, yes. <laughs> no but, matter who it's coming from, honestly. But like, like, just understand this concept. If you are not grounded in knowledge and you are not teaching your kid, which a lot of parents aren't, let's be honest, they're not grounded with knowledge within this religion. On top of that, they're not really teaching their kids the in-depthness about how to go through society in the most Islamic way, especially in this country. Hmm. So if they are not solidified with knowledge, how do you expect them to control themselves when you're not letting them do something that Allah tells them to do? You didn't give them knowledge. If they weren't to get married to be patient, right? 
do this, do that, inshallah, you know? But on top of that, you're stripping them from something that can keep them patient. So what are you really doing for your kid? You get what I'm trying to say? And not only that, like, I know this is, we're getting, like, really deep with this conversation, but it's really important because we get this all the time. And it's something that a lot of the youth, the Muslim youth, really go through. And it's sad. But Wait, not can only... I say, can I say this? Go ahead. The right. least you can do, I would say, is to support your kid getting married. Mm -hmm. That's the that's the least that you can do for us. Or and if you don't, and if you're saying they're not ready to send a third, why are they not ready? That's something you should ask yourself as well. Because true, as yeah, Muslim yeah. parents, our jobs. I'm not a parent yet, but inshallah, when I become a parent, my job is to mold my child to be ready for these things. If you're saying that they don't have a job, they don't have this, why don't they have a job? Why weren't you pushing them? Why weren't you mm. putting them in position so they can be successful in that area? Because that's the most important thing. Yeah. So you can't just say, oh, you don't have a job. You can't help, help them get a job. Put them in positions where they can get a job and they can afford a wife and they could be a good wife for a husband. You know what I mean? So like, it's just, it's just backwards thinking. And it's like, I feel like so much that Muslim parents want their kids to seek this dunya so much. Like, oh, go to college, get a degree first, do this and a third. And they miss out on the important things that we're supposed to be doing Islamically. And you can go to college, you can get a degree and still be married and still follow your religion. It's just a lot of backwards thinking. You know what's crazy though? Yeah. It's crazy because some parents actually want their kids to be the best Muslims. Mm -hmm. But you don't support them yeah. when trying to do so. Or you don't equip them with the right knowledge to try to do so. So what do you, that's what I was saying. Like, what do you expect? Yeah. What do you expect us to do? And you don't support us. Even when the kid, he has some type of knowledge, he's like, Ma, I think I should get married. You know what I'm saying? He has, he has that much urge to be like, okay, I don't want to fall in this. Let me get married. And then it's just like, oh, you're not supporting me? Yeah. What am I supposed to do? Like yeah. at this point, I'm out here. I'm just out here. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, it's sad. Like, out here well, for Satan to do whatever he wants to me. Yeah, may Allah just open the eyes of of all of us, yeah. honestly. Because even we still have me and Kai. That's we're why not we, we we're not perfect. We always try to instill this within our followers or the people we have influence on. Because let's call it a spade a spade. We do have influence on people. We're up here on YouTube. We're up on Instagram. People inbox us, you know, inshallah, may Allah bless you guys. I've been trying to be on the dean. So we do have influence. So we want to protect that, inshallah, with our lives. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times, me and Kai, we don't come up here and just start talking. Because we may say something that's wrong and influence somebody to go to the extreme or be too negligent. And so when we come up here, we want to make sure we're kind of on point. Mm -hmm. We want to make sure that we're not just saying anything up here. So may Allah, you know, forgive our shortcomings and increase us as long as with you inshallah mm -hmm. whoever's in situations like that may Allah grant you patience and you mm -hmm. just have to be patient you have to ask Allah for what you want and ask Allah to give you patience in these situations because it is tough but you have trials and inshallah just to try your best even yeah. with your parents even with your parents the only thing you could disobey them in is when they tell you to do things to disobey Allah mm -hmm. but even then you should still do it with the utmost character and the utmost patience mm -hmm. so inshallah you can guide them Cause you want to get those blessings right yeah and that's another thing too if you're supporting your kid and wanting to get married and stuff you're getting blessings out of that inshallah and imagine if you're shying your kid away from getting married yeah, and they're yeah. and they fall into zina and all these things you could be getting those sins you know so <laughs> it's like a great point it's Why, just like a great point. it's just so important to just support your kid especially parents, when they're doing a lot of good things do not get that. that they could be getting the blessings of their kid doing wrong you because mean the same of their kids I mean, wrong. they could be getting <laughs> sins from their kids doing wrong because they had the opportunity to put their kids in a better place, but they actually kind of oppressed their kid. It's crazy. So that's just something to think about. Mm -hmm. Yes. But I guess it's the end of the video. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we was just talking a lot. But that was really important. I really needed to get that off my chest because it just happens too much. Thank well, you guys we, for watching. Yeah. This is a long video. It's well overdue. It's been a minute. But we just thank you guys for continuing to support us. Really appreciate it. May Allah forgive us if we said anything that was wrong. Um, whatever good that we said was from Allah, whatever bad. Shaitan. Or if we got too emotional, that was from Shaitan trying mm -hmm. to take advantage of us. But, when the evils are our own selves. So, hope you guys benefited. And tell us, guys, what you think about the video. What you think about the answers. Because that's what we do for a two conversation in the comments. So, inshallah, share, like this video, and we will see you next time, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.
Ah, 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 ah,